I know you have a lot to get done today. Otherwise, you wouldn't have clicked on today's very long yet motivating video. Now, I want you to pick three areas of your home today that you are either going to deep clean, declutter, or organize. And don't worry, it doesn't have to come out perfect, but we do have time to make progress on those areas. Now, what I don't want you to do is watch this three hour long video compiled of six different videos, each of which took probably multiple days, is to watch all of these videos and compare yourself to thinking I cannot do as much as she did. But you don't need to, you just need to start somewhere and start taking action. I'm here to just guide you through the process, encourage you to get it done, and also keep you company. If you're new here, my name is Michelle and I'm a mom of three small kids, so things do get a little hectic around my house. But we'll be spending a lot of time together in the next three hours, so you'll get to know me a bit better. I don't care how big or small or decorated or pretty or organized or clean your house is, we are all human and we all have struggles. Some of my struggles include keeping up with the daily activities. I have to give myself a lot of self-encouragement because regardless of what I'm doing, it always feels like it's not enough. As busy moms, we always have so much to do, so I feel like a lot of y'all can relate to that. So in each of these videos, I will give you some sort of inspiration or encouragement. But leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your big task that you plan to get done while watching this video. Now, if you enjoy or get any inspiration out of the content you see today and you're not subscribed, then I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Basically, what that does is it will just allow you to get notified when I post new videos and I'll just pop up in your feed more. So if there's a video that might interest you, then you'll be able to see and check it out in your subscription feed. But I can't do any of this work for you. I can only keep you company. So let's not waste any more time and get started. The same as always, waiting at the airport With your coat and gloves, same time every winter Smiling like you knew me and now all my emotions are searching for you In places we've never been Now I'm starting to realize the chance I've been given But I am so afraid Tony Robbins said in a recent post, we all get what we tolerate. The difference in people is their standards. There's a whole bunch of things that we should be doing, but when our should becomes an absolute must, that's when things change. Now, you think that I may be referring to this as cleaning to help motivate you to get up from I should be cleaning up my stuff and I need to be cleaning up my stuff. And yes, I do mean it in that context, but I also mean that in the context of life. Now, I'll circle back around to that later in this video, but in today's video, you're going to get, oh my goodness, so much out of it. So in today's video, I'm resetting my home. Reset seems to be a hit word this month, so that's what we're going to call it. Um, basically getting my home back to somewhat normal, a little simplified and there are some hiccups along the way as in pretty much every single one of my videos if you're new to my channel welcome my name is michelle i'm a mom of three and my house is just you know normal it's not a disaster it's not perfect i think to me it's normal and that's what i share here 
on my channel, Normal Home, that is messy as it will be with three kids. And I do cleaning motivation. I do organizing. I'm trying to organize. I think I'm getting pretty good at it. Um, but there's always stuff to be organized. I do home makeover projects, which right now, well, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that we are renovating our bathroom. Um, that's a mess. You'll hear lots about that in next week's video. And also seasonal decor. I love decorating and being creative more than I love cleaning, but I seem to be cleaning all the time. So that's where we're at here. Anyway, I would hope that you would subscribe because we have a lot of fun here. If I can motivate you to clean your house, then that's a win for me. But if I can motivate you to change your life, then that's my purpose. But let's go ahead and get started in the bedroom today. I won't make it easy for you now. You got two minutes of my time. And I don't really break too easily. But I'm worth it. Cause I'll slip into your dreams tonight. Oh, oh, oh. So give me, so give me your all. I'll take it, I'll take it to Mars. Oh, I'll stick like glue inside your mind. Oh, oh, oh. Here I'm going through all of the girls shoes and anything that's too small I'm going to pack up and put away. All of their shoes are here on this little cart. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean in in our bedroom. Um, I think it's easier like when I'm like go grab a pair of shoes then for them to like go upstairs and find them because their shoes are not allowed to wear when they go to their school and I just need to make sure like they're they get the right they get the right shoes and another thing is is we do not have a mud room i wish that we had some sort of mud room where i could put shoes and put jackets and things like that um we don't have space for it but i am kind of talking to chris my husband to see if somewhere in the garage we can like create a space um to have all of this stuff but we just haven't yet so right now temporary temporarily that is where all of their shoes are so in starting some of these projects um, I've been talking about this closet project um, that we plan to start hopefully sometime after the bathroom probably not immediately after but sometime soon and then I still need to redecorate in our living room a bit and I know that I already our bedroom I kind of redecorated a little bit but our rug I was in love with this rug and I bought it and it is completely, it's like destroyed. It, all of the, the seams or I don't know what it's called. It all, it's all coming up and it just looks bad and it's, I feel like I can't clean it good enough. So I don't know. I have all of these projects and stuff that I want to start and like get new things, but I have trouble making decisions. I feel like I overthink a lot of stuff, but especially when I'm making like somewhat of a bigger purchase, then I go back and forth on what I like. Is this worth the investment of the item that I really like? Is it not? Should I find something, you know, more in more budget friendly? Will I like it? Is the quality going to be bad? Um, do I like the colors? Do I want to go this route? And then once you start changing something, then it's like, well, that doesn't go together anymore. So there's just this snowball effect of changes whenever you start with one thing. So although I love decorating and like designing stuff, I have difficulty making decisions on it. So I don't know. Is anyone else that way? But anyway, I know that we will get there. And I'm watching cleaning, like me cleaning our bedroom right now thinking that if you think this is bad oh my goodness wait till next week um whenever they had started the renovations there is dust everywhere like our room is covered it is so bad <laughs> and annoying but um yeah but hopefully it won't be too much longer until they're done
So I debated a little bit talking about this, but I'm going to bring it up a little bit because I received a comment um, about having sponsored content and the comment went a little bit along the lines of, um, you know, you had a sponsor in your video. I can't watch you anymore. It felt like you're just a commercial, um, something along those lines. And okay. I I've never like talked about sponsored content ever before. Um, I just want to say, I, I see your perspective, right? I am a viewer of YouTube. I'm a viewer of Instagram, of TikTok, um, and sometimes I can see, right? Like you, you feel like it's maybe on inauthentic or that you're being advertised to. Um, uh, for me, it never bothered me watching, you know, even before I was a creator, it, it never bothered me, but I, I see your point of view. I hear you. Um, I want to talk about the creator's point of view because it's not really talked about a lot. Um, uh, what I'm showing there is a color catcher sheet. I wash those red pants and those color catcher sheets just help get the color so it doesn't bleed all over your other clothes. So I had whites and reds mixed together and that caught the red color so it didn't bleed onto my white clothes. Okay, <laughs> back to what I was saying. Um, from a creator's point of view, if you choose a platform, like when you start out creating content, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to be on this a platform for years, just trying to like make a couple pennies or whatever. You don't know if people are going to like you. You don't know how vulnerable you're going to get. You don't know. It's very scary. Um, it's very, there's a lots of unknowns with it. Um, you're putting yourself out there and you don't know if what you feel is going to be re reciprocated. Um, whatever platform you choose to start off of, um, I will say when you start like on YouTube, unless you already have a presence somewhere else, if, if YouTube is your first platform to start building your audience, you don't make any money. Um, you just want to connect. Maybe there is a goal to eventually make your money because when you start off, you're a brand, you starting off as a brand, um, and it's a creative outlet. You don't, you can hopefully leave your corporate job. You can hopefully make some extra money as a stay at home mom, whatever that is, you have a dream, right? You have some sort of dream. And as much as I don't want to talk about the financial aspect of it, it is important, right? I mean, we all need money to pretty much survive. So as a creator, you're starting off. You don't know if you're going to make any money. You don't know that starting off you are dedicating your time you are dedicating so much effort like each one of my videos I put in a good 20 hours and that's not a joke um, it takes me two to three days to even film a video to edit it to put it out to find the music to voice over to talk think about what I'm going to voice over um, I could put out three videos a week I they're not going to be good quality but um, okay that's just my point of view but anyway, when you first start off, when you start like building a little bit of an audience, um, you're being out here, you're being vulnerable, um, and a brand reaches out to you and wants to connect with you, the feeling of feeling like you want me to represent your brand is um, like, I, I can't describe it. It's, it's like you feel so much, you feel so humbled and pleasure, like joy that someone wants to rep, like they believe in you enough and they trust you enough to represent their product. So that's one thing you don't see behind the scenes is like the feeling of like somebody's trusting in you with their business and with their brand. Um, so it's very rewarding. Um, it's not just like whatever, give me the money or whatever. It's like, no, you really want me and you really trust me and you appreciate my content enough to even sponsor a video for me. Um, as you like grow an audience, um, yeah, you do get, you get paid. And, um, sometimes, you know, you're under contractual agreements and there's things that they want you to say. So, you know, there may be, and, and every brand is different, right? So you can't always say it the way you want to say it. Even if you love the product, there's like, there may be things that 
that you're under contract to say. So if it comes off as inauthentic, doesn't mean that it is an authentic. It's just that that's the way that they see it because they may want to take it and promote it through their avenue and that aligns more with their content. So um, there's lots and lots of different things that go go into it. And my videos are very long. They're 30 minutes plus long most of the time. So if there is a one to three minute sponsor in the video, then and it doesn't align with anything you need, then you simply just pass over it. All of you guys fulfill my purpose. I feel like I, as cheesy as it sounds, feel like I was truly called to inspire and fulfill. The sponsors help me build my goals, my financial freedom. So I just hope that you guys know how much you're appreciated. I want to thank you so much for allowing me to come on here and be myself, accept me for how either unorganized or messy or chaotic it may be. I want to thank you for being here, supporting me and letting me be myself. If it's not right for you to watch content with sponsors in it, then you know, that's okay too. I heard this saying when I first started off on YouTube and it said, if 100% of people like you, then you're a people pleaser. If nobody likes you, then you're an a-hole. And if you find your audience, then stick with them. And I feel like I've truly found you guys, the people who want to be here, I want you here too. Okay, before I make myself cry, I'm done with that. But what I am moving on to next is I'm going to shampoo up this rug. Whenever we moved it for like all the Christmas decorations, we moved it backwards so that we could fit the tree. And I'm going to move the couch back forward closer to the TV. But you can see like how dirty it is and where the couch covered like the the color difference but i'm using the tinco carpet one so this one it shampoos your carpet and then you can put it in dry mode and run it back through and it will dry your carpet as well um i don't i don't know what i'm doing there but this rug is really um it's a i don't know how to explain the material it's not it's like a performance rug. So it's not like a super soft rug, but it is great for performance. So I feel like I keep going back through and I'm like, is it getting the carpet wet? And it is getting the carpet wet, but it's, or the rug wet, but it's, it's like hard to tell because you'll see when I dump this out, you, there's not that much dirt in there, which is, I guess a good thing. Um, but yeah, I think it's the way this rug is. This rug I got from Miss Amira. Um, and I also have their rug in as a runner in our kitchen and I also have one of their softer rugs upstairs in the nursery in Rye's room. I don't know where I found this. I think this I found it through an advertisement I think so I just started using their rugs, but I do like that it is a a good performance So my I guess my point is is that it's like vacuuming it. It's vacuuming it up and sucking it up but because the material is really weird um, it doesn't, I don't think it picks up a whole lot. Now the rug in my bedroom, I am like that, that took me a long time to make a decision on it. Cause it was more of an investment piece. And I, I don't like spending a lot of money on rugs cause I know they're going to get ruined, but I saw that rug and I was like, okay, this is more than I would initially spend on one, but I really liked it. And, um, oh, here I'm just showing you that it's not wet underneath. Um, I think one time I shampooed a rug a long time ago and there were some concerns that um, if it gets wet underneath it'll seep through and like ruin the wood but um, I do double check and make sure and it didn't but the rug in my bedroom is like already ruined I feel like so I don't know I like these performance rugs I just wish that they were felt really soft so I'll go ahead and finish up in here and then move the couches back to keep it nice and clean not freak out and cause a scene i try to hold it together keep it together not sure who i really am just be cute and super bland i try to hold it together keep it together been playing it down but i'm so getting tired now won't you meet
This table initially goes downstairs behind the couch. It matches our coffee table and we move it up here because when we push the couch all the way back, we don't have room for it without it blocking the door. So we temporarily have to move some furniture around, but we're bringing this back downstairs. Um, I did order a new like living room media center and then I am deciding on a new coffee table if I get a new coffee table then I'm deciding if I should paint this one or stain it like black because our new furniture is going to be black so again with the decisions have you guys ever stained furniture black I don't know I don't know if I want to paint it since it's wood are you guys if you've ever done furniture or are really good at like furniture flipping leave me a comment let me know if it's better to like paint the wood or to find a really really dark stain and stain it i'm gonna get this party lit come 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 with me let's do something we'll regret come 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 with me i'm gonna get this party lit come 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 with me so if you guys follow me over on my instagram then you probably saw me post this last week and uh, a couple days ago or maybe a week prior to this chris had noticed that the there was something leaking outside and um he was like i think we need a new water heater i think our water heater is leaking through the ceiling and he kept telling me about it kept telling me about it and then i was like okay then figure it out i don't know what to do like you you need to figure out what to do so he went up there and he's like it's getting so bad like the whole bottom of our water heater rusted out and it was leaking into the pan and then it was leaking like in our through our attic so he went i wasn't initially going to record this this is why I'm, it's like in the middle but um it just was so bad <laughs> um so what we're doing now is we are draining the water heater because we are going to get rid of this water heater so what we need to do is drain the entire thing and then we need to get it out down from the attic and then he's having his friend come over and help him bring it back up in the attic and then he's going to connect it so we are you know we ha he's in the attic and i have it the hose hooked down here and i'm like how is this so bad like this is really gross i mean it's not the water that's coming out of our sinks or anything but this is like what's draining from the water heater so whatever youtube video he watched on how to change this out they said that you are supposed to do this to your water heater like drain it every year and we are on year eight and we didn't know that and i was like chris did you know we were supposed to do this and he's like no that's why plumbers make so much money because you don't know these things but maybe some of you guys did. But if you didn't know that, then you are supposed to drain your water heater every single year. And if it looks like this, then, and the guy on the YouTube video was, is like, if, you're, if your water looks like this, then it's really bad. And I was like, yep, ours is really bad. So anyway, um, all that stuff. So that was just like one round. We continue to do this um, over and over again until we can finally get the water heater to be empty. Um, eventually I, you know, I close the drain and then I will have to get all of that, those rocks and whatever's in there all cleaned up. But for right now, the whole bottom of our water heater is pretty rusted out. So Chris is working on disconnecting it disconnecting everything and if you kind of see the pan below that is where like all the stuff is falling and overflowing into that pan and into um our our ceiling but so much fun right <laughs> and this is horrible so it's leaking out on our in our roof um what happened here was that i turned the water on and he didn't have the water turned off and it started spilling over so it started leaking everywhere so that was just a mistake on our part he should have turned the water off i shouldn't have turned the water on whatever so now our next step is going to be to work to get this water heater out of the attic so down out of the attic and all the way downstairs why it's up in this attic upstairs i don't know um because it's hard to change out, but that's just the way, I guess, it came when we got the house. 
So my task in this project is going to be to help him get this water heater down the stairs and mind you like the whole bottom of it is coming apart. Um, in fact, whenever he threw it, he throws it out, it like the whole bottom is rotted out. And we have no water until he can go to the store, buy a new water heater from Home, Home Depot and get everything connected back and working. Then we don't have water. So I'm going to clean up this bathtub and get all of that, I don't know what that stuff is called, out as best as I can. And then later on, whenever we get our water turned on, then that's when I can come back and clean up this bathtub. So we got the new water heater in. I helped him carry it upstairs. He had a friend help him carry it up the attic and connect it. But I hope your day is going better than mine. So when I went back to work the very first day, started back working from home because I was on maternity leave, I spilled my coffee all over this rug that I had pretty much just shampooed. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know that this has been a fiasco because I get my little green machine, the Bissell green machine out and because I'm just gonna like vacuum up that one spot and it does great. I mix in the solution, I turn it on. And um, when this rug is really, really wet, you can't see if it gets the stain out, if that makes sense. Like it just looks like a humongous wet spot so I have to wait for it to dry at least a day and then I can determine whether or not the stain is still there. So I am, you know, scrubbing this thing, getting it, getting all of this out. And, you know, whenever I dump it out in the toilet, I'm like, oh, there's all my coffee, right? Disgusting, right? So I think that I get it out. And then, um, because I don't show this in the video, I don't show like the next day and the next day. Um, I think that this is my one and done deal. And, um, no, it's still there. And then, so I asked you guys and you're like, okay, do this, do this, do use Folex, right? So I do have the Folex spray and I spray, spray, spray. So I got to wait a day again to see what it looks like. And it did a lot better, but it's still there. So, um, I just got to, I guess I got to keep dousing it in Folex and, um, doing the trick. So I, so I have this little Bissell green machine, right? Everybody else has it so I had to go out and, and buy it and be like everybody else but anyway it is really a cool thing what Chris does is instead of like getting this fancy contraption is he's like no you just go get the old shot vac and dump some hot water in there and suck it all up and it works every time too it's like pretty much the same thing so if you have a shot vac um, and you want to go that route like Chris does, then you can totally do that. Dump some hot water and soap and then just keep sucking it up. Um, this little guy does the same thing. So maybe the shop vac's a little more powerful. I don't know. There you go. There's all my coffee. I hope you were thirsty. I'm out of reasons. I'm out of rhyme. But I'll only tell you that I'm out I'm sick of love songs, I'm tired of this And I wanna tell you straight just like it is You're watching me like you want me But you're still holding back, still holding back Honestly, you're annoying me With the way that you keep playing Show me your love like it is, like it is And open my heart like you're fair I'm out of patience, 
So lastly, I'm upstairs picking up the playroom, but I started this video off talking about Tony Robbins and what he said about when we're willing to change and when everything that we should be doing becomes an absolute must. And it's kind of incredible because this theory that I keep hearing come up is that most people would rather run away from pain than run towards pleasure. Meaning that in most cases, we just settle. We just accept the things that come to us and we think about everything that we want to do and we should do. I should spend more time with my kids. I should be better at this. I should work out more. I should declutter my kitchen, but we just don't do those things. And there's always an excuse. And until we can overcome our fear of those excuses, right? We make excuses because we feel fear. We feel fear of the way that it's going to be, the fear of being different, of the fear of having to deal with change. But the truth is, is that you don't grow in your comfort zone. You just don't. You have to get uncomfortable to grow. You have to try something new to grow. You're not going to grow your muscles sitting on the couch. You're not going to grow your business watching Netflix all day long. You're not going to learn to grow spiritually and emotionally unless you learn to love and to be loved. You're not going to get your home organized like you want it to be by it just sitting there. You have to get uncomfortable. You've got to take all that crap out look at it, figure it out. And guess what? I promise you will thank me when you're done. So if you're running away from the pain of something and it's really hard, know that you can do hard things. Have you guys heard of the whole manifesting thing that has come up where you manifest your dreams and you manifest the life you want to live? And then as you start living out that manifestation, then it starts becoming true and real. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't happen overnight, but a little bit each day, a little bit each day, when you start seeing that it's all, all the puzzle pieces are coming together, then that's when manifesting happens. I'll use this as an example, right? You buy a car, right? And you start noticing everything about this car and these features, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna buy this car. And then all of a sudden, you start seeing this car everywhere before you never saw the car you're like yeah I, I never see this type of car on the road that often not many people have it i'm gonna you know whatever and then after you get it you're like these cars are everywhere like i see one i can count the number of cars of this type of car i see every day on the road it's because now you notice it you look for it you will find what you look for same thing goes with opportunity with love relationships, whatever it may be. So think about what you're looking for and is it the right thing? I'm going out way tonight. Are you close to here? Mm -hmm. I'm feeling down. I don't know why. I know it's so surreal. Think I want you here.
so I have a subscriber I want to give a shout out to and she is a seven-year-old named Sophia her mom reaches out to me lets me know on Instagram how much Sophia enjoys my videos so I just want to say shout out to you Sophia keep doing an awesome job cleaning up your room and I know that you are going to accomplish big things I'm finally getting this playroom back and organized. The funny thing is, is that the girls play up here so much more than they used to. So I can't complain because they're actually playing with their toys, but you know, it makes a mess. If you have kids around the same age as mine, five and three, then um, as much as they try to pick it up. So I organize this whole space so I know where everything goes. They kind of know where everything goes, but I think sometimes for like a three-year-old and a five-year-old, or at least mine, is like as long as it's picked up off the floor, it doesn't matter what basket it goes into, then it's clean. As long as you can see the floor, then it's clean. And it's like, well, I really want it to go in this bin with the rest of the crowns. But, you know, I don't, I'm not up here following them around, making sure it's in every single bin. I usually just do like let it be for a couple weeks or week or two weeks or so and then i'll come up here and just do a mass cleanup and then we'll kind of start fresh from there so that's what i did there and then um this is like a really old shark vacuum that i've had and since we've had our old house so 10 years maybe and it's really powerful and it works great so um i think i got it at costco for 99 dollars probably 10 years ago i know they have a newer one out um, cause it's like a shark pet vacuum. Um, it works great. Very powerful. It's a bit like heavier, but, um, I like it for like carpeted area. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights. Won't stop for traffic lights. I'm going to end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you all for all your support. Next week, I'll talk more about our bathroom renovation and you'll see like the amount of dust that we are currently living in, but I'm not complaining. It's going to turn out amazing and it'll be worth it, but make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. And I will see you guys next week. So think about this question real quick. Would you rather have more sleep, more energy, or more time alone? I know you're asking, Michelle, why can I only pick one? But just think about it for a minute while we get started. 
So in today's video, you guys saw it. I'm gonna clean up this house and I've just had my caffeine. So we are gonna do it with lots of energy. I'm gonna make some breakfast, some avocado toast, and I do admit it doesn't look that pretty, but it is really good. I'll pop in my Nespresso. I will add some organic almond milk to it because if you saw in a previous video, I did this whole food sensitivity test. It said I was sensitive to everything in the world. Not really, <laughs> but I was sensitive to dairy. So I switched from regular milk to almond milk. And one thing I did try that I do not like is the almond whipped cream. So I'm just sacrificing a little bit and just putting regular whipped cream on here. But if you have thought about what you would rather have more of, then leave me what you picked down in the comments below. If you can't already tell, mine would be more energy. I feel more alive, more positive, more purposeful when I have lots of energy and my goal in today's video is to get you to create your own energy and also pass a little bit of my energy on to you. Today's video is also special because it's a collaboration with my fellow Texas friend here on YouTube, Ashley Forbes. Ashley is an amazing mom of four kids with what seems to be an endless amount of energy to tackle all of the daily real life messes. She does cleaning and organizing, decluttering, and all types of motivation. Not only does she have a special cleaning channel, she also has a vlog channel where you can follow along on her everyday life. She is the sweetest person, and not only that, her videos are just authentic and just real life, what it's like to manage a home with four kids. So after this video, go ahead and look in my description. I have the link to her video. Be sure to check her out. Subscribe. Let her know I sent you. You guys will love her. And if you're here from Ashley's video, let me know in the comments below. If this is your first time to ever click on one of my videos, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Michelle. I'm a mom of three kids, five and under. I know that it's obvious from the title that I clean my house on YouTube, but I promise this channel is so much more than that. I am a work from home mom juggling so many different things. And at one point I just prayed that I could get through every single day just surviving but now I just feel like I'm thriving. Taking away the pressure of having a perfect life, having a perfect house, having the most perfect morning routine, I just throw all of that in the trash. I know some of you are gasping, but I promise you, having that weight lifted off and just doing your own thing just makes you feel so much happier. So with that said, I am all about empowering women to be the best versions of themselves. That doesn't mean having a perfect house. That doesn't mean having the perfect cleaning routine. That doesn't mean having the best formulas to clean your house. Yes, that's all helpful and everything, but just being able to be present and happy and focusing on the things that matter, help you feel better and be a better person and have more energy to get all the things done that you need to. I was knocked down, heard the countdown through the haze in the face of defeat, yeah. I was ruled out with no bailout on my own, all alone, left to bleed out. But I rose up from the ground, just like I was profound, all the odds were against me. So I So I was pulling out the dishwasher pods and I don't know why, but they're all stuck together and they're also all soapy. Like I know my hands are wet, but they were already all soapy. Anyway, I put the pod in where the silverware goes because when we first moved into this house, the um, appliance installer, I don't know what he was. He was like fixing the dishwasher. I think there was something wrong with it. And he said that a lot of times it gets stuck in the little thing, like when you 
do the washer it gets stuck in the little compartment so just to not put it in the compartment and I don't know if it was, it was just this brand but um, ever since then I stopped putting them in the compartment and I just put it with all of the silverware but one thing I did want to ask y'all is do you rinse off your dishes before you put them in the dishwasher I ask this because um, sometimes when we have friends come over or like we're hosting an event or something there will be some of our friends who are really nice and they'll start putting the dishes in the dishwasher and on a couple of occasions they have like not rinsed off the dishes and then just put them straight in the dishwasher and I always wonder um, why do, I mean, do you not rinse them off? I always rinse off our dishes. I think because I just don't trust that the dishwasher is going to clean everything. And I know a lot of you guys don't have dishwashers because you've told me. But anyway, long story short, let me know in the comments. Do you rinse off your dishes before you put them into the dishwasher? Or do you put them in dirty and then it cleans everything? And if you do do that, what dishwasher pod do you use? This is a bottle sanitizer, so I'll rinse off the bottles, um, rinse them off with soap a little bit, and then I will put the um, them in the sanitizer. So that's just a cap to a bottle, totally fell down to the garbage disposal. And for some reason, I have a fear of sticking my hand down there. That's kind of traumatizing watching it back, but I'm always scared it's going to turn on and it's just going to, you know... You know what I mean. All right, next I'm moving on to the stove. I am going to use the pink stuff today to clean off the stove. Sometimes I use the pink stuff, sometimes I just use like dish soap, but uh, the pink stuff tends to work really well. If you like what you see, come and get it with me. I know you deserve all you want. Cause your heart's made of cold. I am in the process of working on decluttering our kitchen area so I'm going through all of the cabinets all of the upper cabinets all of the drawers going back through those and then all of the lower cabinets I ordered these what are they like pull out shelves and I need Chris to install those so I'm going to try and declutter the that whole part and then have him install the sliding shelves I guess you can call them. We ha still have them in the box. We haven't opened them yet because I just pack on the projects and before we're ready to officially handle them all. But I think for our kitchen, I have finally come up with a way that I have organized it to where it actually works and functions the way that we need it to. If you do follow me on Instagram, Michelle O'Malley 711, then you probably have seen a sneak peek into some of the cabinets. But that will be, you know, over the course of several videos and it will be super helpful because this is probably my third time, second to third time reorganizing everything and I can just tell you what hasn't worked for me like as a newbie organizer going from like complete clutter to trying to buy the bends and everything to trying to create some sort of functionality to it um, and then every time I go back I just get a little bit better and better they say organizing is about the systems that you create so that you can maintain it but it's hard when you don't know what your systems are and when your systems are all over the place to begin with how do you get a system that works for you so for me, it's taken a, a little while to get it down, but I am really happy with how all that turned out. I mean, so far, I'm not completely done with it yet. Want to keep it nice and clean, not freak out and cause a scene. I try to hold it together, keep it together, not sure who I really am.
All right, time to pull out the big wig, the green machine, because our carpet has stains all over it. Who knows where they come from? I know where they come from. They come from our kids, but that's okay. I have just accepted that this is where I'm at in my life and I'm just gonna figure out how to clean it up. So I hope that this works. So I'm just gonna put a little cap of the solution that it came with into this green machine. It's like a shampooer, um, but it's like smaller. So you don't have to like carry your big shampooer around if you have one. Um, and then you just plug it in, you fill it up with water, you just plug it in, turn it on and then spray it. So I do know what this is. I think it, well, no, it's either Play-Doh or slime. I don't remember. I think I remember the slime being pink then this must be Play-Doh. So the thing is, is that this Play-Doh is stuck on the carpet. Do I let my kids like run around with Play-Doh all over the carpet? Of course not. Um, but do I like follow them around and look at every single thing they do? I don't do that either. So um, things get in places where they're not supposed to. And um, I'm just gonna be reactive instead of proactive about it by cleaning up using this little guy. I'm kind of surprised, but it did get all of the Play-Doh out. I thought since some of the Play-Doh was like dried to it, I was worried that it wouldn't come out. Now this pink stuff I think is the, the slime. <laughs> so I'm going to also use this and just hope that it all comes out. So I'm happy to say that all the slime did come out. And since I already have this guy out, then I figure I might as well just do the side of the couch. Um, the cushions on our couch come off. So um, I usually just wash those in the washing machines, but the sides, you know, obviously this part doesn't come out. And it is pretty bad. If I like zoomed in and showed you guys, it's, it's kind of bad but it's almost like the couch was resistant to water. But anyway, just doing that little section, this is what came out of it. And I know that most people will be like, oh, that's so disgusting. I'm like, yes, look how much it got out. That's perfect. If the water was clean, I'd be mad. I would tell you right now, I would be mad because I'm like, what a waste of time. I cleaned up a clean area and that's not what I want. I got this weight on my shoulders, slowing me down. I don't know how it came about. And while the world is spinning faster every night, I feel I'm stuck in reverse somehow. But it ain't no one. All right, so it's a new day. I'm moving up to the playroom. I'm going to focus on this area today. And over the weekend, we had a sleepover. My sister and my niece came over and the girls had a sleepover here so I'm going to pick up everything um, today one thing that I have really given up is perfecting the organization of this playroom um, if I want my kids to help me then my expectation of the way that they can organize is different from the way that I can organize. So, you know, as much as I hated like things just going into a bin, like where, you know, I have the necklaces over here, but now the necklaces are just thrown in this bin. I'm kind of to the point right now where I just don't care. It's just as long as it's all picked up and somewhat in a relatively close area where it's supposed to be, then I'm okay. I don't need to organize it to perfection. It's not worth it. The kids play up here every single day and it is what it is, at least for now. All right. So going back to the topic of creating energy, I listen, I listen to a lot of podcasts and audiobooks and like hundreds, if not thousands of hours. I'm obsessed with it. 
if you don't already know that, but I was listening to this short form. It was a TikTok that Tony Robbins had, and it was about creating energy. Now, in my mind, I'm going, I already know how to create energy. You have to be able to sleep through the night. I don't sleep through the night. Um, my baby still wakes up sometimes throughout the night. You know, I have small kids. Of course, I can't sleep enough. So, of course, I don't have energy. Um, and then eating right. Of course, I had chocolate last night. So, you know, I'm not going to be as energetic. I'm going to be sluggish. And I think that energy is all about like, what I'm eating and how I'm sleeping at night and how much sunlight I'm getting and, and all of these things. But then he put it into this perfect, perfect perspective. And I was kind of shocked about how true this was. And the funny thing is, is it had nothing to do with anything that I thought had to do with it. It's like a 40 second TikTok clip and what he says in this 40 seconds is super empowering. He says, energy does not come from food or sleep. It comes from within. It comes from having a mission, having something that you're being pulled by, not something that you're pushing on. There are two types of motivation, something that you push yourself to do, but you can only push yourself so far and something that you're being pulled to do, something that's greater than yourself and something that excites you. And most people have never dreamed of this type of energy and we all have it, but we don't usually connect and unleash it. And I had to think about this for a second because I'm sitting here playing victim mentality saying I just have all these kids. I'm so tired all the time. I just don't have the energy to get up and do the things that are necessary to do. So I had to think about this for a minute. And I, in, in one of my videos a while back, I talked about trusting your gut feeling and I just, I just watched The Bachelor. I don't know when this, when this video will be posted, but I watched The Bachelor and, it, and when they picked the final person, when he picked the final person, the girl, Gabby, who didn't pick, get picked, she just kept saying, I knew it in my gut. I knew it in my gut. He wasn't going to pick me, but I hoped it was wrong. So I think about like, how do I know where the energy is pulling me? What direction it is? And I just think back to like knowing your gut feeling, like your gut is what's going to pull you to a certain energy or a certain purpose or a certain thing or decision that is going to eventually unleash this energy that Tony Robbins describes. So all that to say, whatever direction you are trying to move for, whatever energy you're trying to find, look back, trust your gut. Where is your gut pulling you? And lean into that because that will unleash the energy i feel the touch of your hand love you with all of my heart makes me tremble within love the smell of your hair We are what four months into the year if you downloaded my goal getter guide which helps you set realistic and attainable goals then I want you to take a step back and see where you're at with your goals so I know for me I've hit two of my goals I'm really proud of and also taking a look back it is the one year anniversary where Chris left his corporate job to pursue entrepreneurship, pursue his own landscaping company. And I mentioned this because one of our goals for 2023 
was to try new things, like get out of our normal funk and our normal routine and our day-to-day -day life, which I mean, we, we love and we enjoy, but sometimes you can get like too trapped on that mouse wheel where you're just like, you can't get off. Um, but one of our things was to like try new things and, um, we, not we, I would say he has taken an interest in golf, which is really cool. Um, I mean, I don't like him leaving and going golfing, but, um, we both like started to on the weekends go and play putt putt golf and he bought some clubs. He's going to try and go golfing during the week now, since I wouldn't say he has like a whole lot of free time, but with this opportunity, there's a lot more freedom to be able to do as you please. So I'm starting to like find an interest in it too. And we watched that Netflix show. What is it called? Um, Top Swing? Something like that. And it talks about all of the pro golfers, which I used to think golf was the most boring sport ever. And now that I, I don't know, I just decided to like stop thinking that way and take an interest in it and it's actually a really interesting sport but i've always been curious what are some of y'all's outside hobbies i know here we always talk about lots of cleaning and organizing and mindset but let's like just have fun what do you guys like to do do you have do you like to golf do you like to like go to the beach or um like what are some of your side hobbies maybe i can get some ideas as well to try new things I need to go through all of these clothes again, although I feel like I go through these clothes all the time and declutter. What's different about this time around is because Rye is for sure our last baby, as he grows out of things, I can start to really like declutter. <laughs> Whereas before I would just save everything knowing that um, in case we wanted more or you know what, whatever were to happen, but now I just, our heart just feels like we're done and we are complete and everything is just the way it should be. But also it's, it's really bittersweet because, you know, those are like, you have an emotional connection with these things because these are things that your baby used and you're never going to need them again, which I know it's like other people can use them and it's, but it's just, I don't know if any of you guys feel this way about if you are on your last baby or like when you had to get rid of all of all of the rest of your baby stuff it's just like emotional but it's also like i don't have room for this and you're just ready to accept the next chapter So clearly I'm having trouble making this bed. I'm watching this back and I'm like, what am I doing? So I guess I keep putting the sheet on wrong. But that being said, these are bamboo sheets and bamboo sheets are by far the softest bed sheets ever. We just got these on Amazon. We have the Karalua, Karalua bamboo sheets, um, not sponsor anything. I just really like bamboo bed sheets so that's what these are and then of course they have that's a little bumper so like if you're transitioning from a crib to a 
you know, a toddler bed or whatever. Um, we had to train, we transitioned transition sailor really early like right before she turned two out of a crib and then we had like a guardrail up on her previous bed and then now the girls share this bunk bed but they both sleep on the bottom bunk and um savannah my three-year-old she's she's a wild child she you know flips around and sleeps very all over the place so i just have that bumper there so that she doesn't fall over and hit her head I bet you didn't think making a bed was hard until you have to make the top bunk of a bunk bed. I I had bunk beds growing up. I was I was the youngest, so I had to sleep on the bottom bunk, and I feel like the oldest always gets the top bunk. But um, yeah, it's a pain to make the top bunk, but I got it eventually. It's not perfect. I don't care, but we tried. But I am just about done for the day. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you energy to have an amazing rest of your day. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already and be sure to go check out Ashley's channel right now. But I will see you guys in my next video. I miss you, miss you Take you off, I came, your weight is strong Cannot keep it low-key Got me drugged, your pheromones hit the roof Auto, your taste It's really a bad reception out there Where are you heading? Why ain't gravity pulling you in closer to me? I've lost you Off my radar now I've lost you Telling you that I need you But you're off my radar now if you would have told me five years ago the amount of effort it takes to maintain a household of five people and a dog I would not have believed you But that's also the crazy thing about life We adapt and we find a way so I did a poll over on my community tab a while ago and asked you guys what your relationship with, with cleaning was. And surprisingly to me, about 40% of y'all said that you love cleaning and you do not need any motivation to do it. So as much as I would love to say, I hope I give you all the motivation today, chances are you're already motivated to do it or you possibly have already gotten it all done. So if you're here for entertainment, chit chat, stories, inspiration, or if you really need motivation to clean your house, then I'm glad you're here. I have lots of stuff to pick up, put away, and clean up. Then I'm going through my dresser. Clothes are my weakness, so I am decluttering some things in my dresser. And then I finally got Chris to head into the closet and declutter some of his clothes. Mark Twain said, the secret to making progress is just getting started. So let's go ahead and go. Yeah, his baby said that they don't got a future, future like that. It burns, so give him something worse to kill his head with, make him forget somehow. Might be that another day she would have wished he stayed, but they're done. Sorry, this won't be enough this time. Yeah. All his friends to get some action and distract him right now. He's fine, but Lucy on the line. Let's get this started. Where's the party tonight? I feel good. Nothing weighs me down. I can't believe my love right now. Red eyes while he said. Don't you wanna have fun? Fool around with someone. These laundry baskets have been life changing. They are almost like commercial grade. They are the brand Steel, S-T-E-E-L-E. -E -E. I got ours at Crate and Barrel. 
Um, but I know that they sell them a lot of different places like on Wayfair as well. I have two baskets total and each basket has um, two sections. So I have one section for all of the kids clothes, all three of the kids clothes. One section is mine. I have another section for extra stuff like towels and whenever I need to wash sheets and stuff like that. And then Chris has another section. I do laundry almost every day, probably not every day, but probably at least five days a week. And I feel like it's always full. There's always laundry to be done. But I don't know about you guys, but one thing I don't like is to have laundry unfolded. So like it's clean clothes and just throw it in the basket. I like to fold it right away. If I know that I can't get to it, then I don't put a load in the washer or dryer. When I started my YouTube channel and started to become better at functioning, <laughs> managing a household, that's when I started the KonMari method or something similar to that in the way that I fold my clothes. Now it takes a little bit longer and I've mentioned this before, but uh, I, I don't think I could go back to another folding style because it just makes it so easy to see everything that we have. And since I am like a clothes hoarder i want to say like i'm not that bad but i love clothes i love kids clothes i love my clothes i we have a lot of them and i've just accepted that's just the way i am it makes me happy then i need to find a better way to manage them and that's just how i do it so let me know down below how often do you do laundry is it every single day or do you have a specific routine that you do it on certain days also do you clean all your clothes and then live off of your clean clothes laundry basket like just start pulling things out never put your clothes away no shame in that or do you fold them immediately when you get them out of the dryer So speaking of decluttering, has there ever been an item that you decluttered that you regretted? Let me know in the comments below and I'll go first here. So whenever I decluttered my bathroom, I got rid of all of the stuff that I hadn't used in a while. But there's always that like one instance where you might use it again, but it's not an item you would probably ever buy. And here's my example. We got invited to this 80s party and I used to have an old hair crimper and I held on to it for a long time. Reason being in case we, you know, back in the day I used to crimp my hair, but just in case there was an instance where I might need it, a Halloween occasion or 80s, whatever. So now coming back around, I'm really, really regret getting rid of the hair crimper for this upcoming party. And just real quick, those are my eyelashes. I'll pull them off in the shower and I'll just leave them there instead of like throwing them away right there. And then I'll look in the corner and they look like little spiders. I know it's so gross, but that's what that was. But going back to the items that I decluttered, I know I could wear my hair a different way and do and get creative. But in my mind, I was like, man, I thought I had that hair crimper that would have been perfect. Now that I'm on the topic of decluttering old stuff, I basically have been in maternity clothes for the last two years, like while I was pregnant and then postpartum until, you know, I can fit back into my pre-pregnancy clothes and I am, you know, wearing my jeans and everything and I'm like, everybody's in bell bottom jeans and I have a whole closet full of skinny jeans. So I went to a store today for something and they had some bell bottom jeans and I was like, I'm just going to try them on. I went to the dressing room, I put them on, and I had flashbacks of me standing in Abercrombie and Fitch in junior high trying on, I swear, the same pair of jeans. But I usually resist change, especially new fashion change, but I, they were, I have to say, they were flattering and I ended up buying them. So here I am talking about buying new stuff and we're supposed to be decluttering. But my goal is always progress. I've gotten so much better in getting into the habit of decluttering, especially as I start buying new stuff. But you would be proud of me. I've been to Goodwill two weekends in a row and it feels amazing. But the last two times I've decluttered my closet, I have been asking Chris to go through all of his clothes because we ordered a new closet system. Who knows when that's gonna get put together? That's gonna take, it's gonna take a while, but, um, 
slowly but surely I've been trying to like get things cleaned out because I think we're going to end up losing space when we put in it's the Ikea pack system but the way we design the closet I think we're going to end up losing space because I'm adding more drawers in it so I want to start slowly getting rid of some stuff and his clothes like they're all ripped up come falling apart I'm like Chris they're stained I'm like, come on, you can get rid of a lot of this stuff. So that's what we're doing now. I'm going to have him go through a lot of his clothes and then I'm going to move over to my dresser and go through some of my clothes. You held me back when I tried to move on from your life. So you stole my life for clarity. So hold me back, now you're here. Cause I'm mad, show no fear. Wanna let you know just how it felt. So we made some progress and I'm okay with that. Now I am moving on to my dresser. If you didn't know, I have a whole dresser full of clothes as well. Here I have all of my workout clothes, shorts, stuff like that. And my whole thought process whenever we designed our closet was I wanted to get rid of that dresser. I, I had bought those shorts. I can't decide if I liked them or not, biker shorts. But I'm now, since I said I'm like eight months postpartum, I'm trying on a few things to see, do I still like it? Does it still fit? Can I fit back into everything? Can I not fit back into everything? Um, but my whole idea eventually is to get rid of this dresser and move all of my clothes into the closet and then just have this space more opened up. So I'm just gonna be honest, no shame. I'm pretty bougie with my workout clothes. I like to have a lot. I like specific types of workout clothes. So decluttering this was a little bit hard. Um, I will donate these to friends first. So I know that I can resell a lot of this stuff, but I'm gonna um, first give the pack to all my friends and say, go through it, take whatever you want, and then probably just donate the rest. This is pretty much what I wear on a daily basis. And if you were ever like a CrossFitter, I was into CrossFit in like 2013, 2014. I got big onto CrossFit. The whole CrossFit gang got me big into Lululemon. So I have a lot of that type of brand over the last 10 years. That kind of set the bar for me. And then I just got to be very particular about um, workout clothes like t-shirts and stuff I'm like all about target t-shirts but workout clothes I am a little bit more particular and I have no shame in that now I am eight months postpartum so a lot of these clothes I had said so I, I did a declutter when I was pregnant I did a declutter when I got rid of a lot of the maternity stuff and now I'm trying to go through I wasn't going to try on any of these clothes until I felt comfortable enough that I had um, kind of got back to normal so I'm feeling pretty confident. I put a lot of hard work into the last eight months so that I can fit back into my clothes, but I will see kind of what they, you know, your body changes with every pregnancy. So I just want to see where I'm at with, with everything and what I want to keep and what I don't want to keep. I'm out of reasons, I'm out of rhyme. But I'll only tell you that I'm out of time I'm sick of love songs, I'm tired of this And I wanna tell you straight just like it is You're watching me 
So is anyone here athletic or play any sports or played any sports or excelled at any particular sport or have kids that are really, really good? Let me know what sport it is below. So I was kind of athletic growing up, but I wouldn't say an athlete. I would say I was very average, like I could make the team, but I was like on the C team or I would do a sport, but I was kind of always in the back row. Um, I loved playing sports, but there was nothing that I was like super excelled at. So I did gymnastics for a little bit when I was younger, which now reminds me that I do need to get the girls enrolled in gymnastics. And then I did competitive cheer for one year in junior high. And then I did volleyball for a little bit. And then after that, I did dance for a little bit. And then I just decided that I wasn't. Oh, and I did softball for a little bit. So I play different sports, um, but it always makes me wonder what my kids will be interested in now that they're getting, I have a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and then rise eight months. So I guess I need to get them more into sports. I tried to get Sailor into gymnastics when she was a little younger, but she just wanted, she stopped wanting to go. So I kind of pulled her out, but I need to get both of them back in. Um, but now looking at it as a parent, I'm like, oh my goodness, the commitment, <laughs> the commitment to, to um, sports activities. I know when they get older, it's going to be like a huge commitment depending on what sports they wanna play. But if you currently have kids into sports and you know have make the commitment the weekends and the practices during the week and all that, let me know your thoughts and feelings about it. Show me a love, leave me breathless, breathless. Lastly, we're moving on to my shorts drawer. I really like jean shorts, as you can tell. I'm also particular about that. So I will buy different ones and then I like to wear different kinds to different occasions. I know it sounds weird, but I just like it. So this is my first time trying on jean shorts and seeing if they, how they feel and fit um, being postpartum. Now, I know I was a little hesitant to post these clips because I know that body image is the number one shame factor in all women. And I'm just showing you real life that I feel absolutely amazing, but just after kids, your body changes and there's nothing wrong with that. I gained um, 40 or 45 pounds with Rye and it has not been easy. In fact, he was my hardest one. My third one was, it was my hardest pregnancy. It was my hardest kind of everything, but I will spare you all the details about the weight loss stuff. Um, I could talk about it for hours, but for my shorts, I put a hold on those. I ended up not decluttering a lot of my shorts, but I did declutter a lot of my pants and workout shirts. But if you wanna know more about that, just leave me a comment or just let me know what you guys want to know more about and I will be happy to share. Now, I mentioned earlier I liked bougie stuff and I, a long time ago, I did a sponsor with ThreadUp. So that's what introduced me to ThreadUp. And then recently, just the other day, I actually got back on and I bought a couple more name brand items from ThreadUp for like one third of the price. So, and they came in, I absolutely love everything I got. So if you are a thrifter or like to thrift, then Thread Up is a good place to find clothes that are gently used, that are name brand at a really good price. I was facing all the sunlight while our feet swung If I'd save you If you were crazy enough to take a swim A swim I try and try to make you see That my shoulder is ready for you to lean on So why, oh why do you still flee When you 
So I was scrolling through Instagram and I read this post from Tom Bilyeu and his question said, you can either ask for stronger shoulders to carry a heavier load or you can ask for a lighter load. The choice is yours. And I'm thinking, this is a trick question, so what's the right answer? Or I'm thinking, I know there's no right or wrong answer, but what's the answer that more people choose? So y'all let me know in the comments, stronger shoulders or a lighter load. So I know that I'm making a decluttering video, so chances are you may be thinking, well, less stuff, less to maintain, so obviously a lighter load. But then I remember when we had two kids and we were pretty stressed out. We absolutely are blessed and love them. And I'm thinking, do I want to have another kid? Can I even manage having another kid? I don't think I can. And um, we ended up, obviously we ended up having Rye and it's the best decision we ever made in our life. Having more of something is not always a bad thing and having less of something also is not always a bad thing. So going back to the question, I think the key is knowing when to ask for a lighter load or ask for help when it's getting too much or when you really need to work those shoulder muscles and be able to carry the heavier load. I've mentioned before that I really, really want to empower women. And I know everyone goes through hard times, but I feel like as women, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to look a certain way, be a certain way, parent a certain way, clean up a certain way, have a certain routine. And it can be just so overwhelming at times. Like I'm struggling so bad with my work-life balance. I have been just having such deep guilt around, and I'm gonna try not to get emotional, but around not being with my kids all the time. And I didn't really mean to go this direction today, but I don't know, it's just something that came came on to me today. And I know I'm a really good mom. I don't doubt being a good mom. I just, sometimes I just have this overwhelming amount of guilt around it, around wanting to be more present, wanting to be better at homemaking, better at routines, better at doing this whole managing the household um, and less so focused on work disciplines. I think in building this community here, you guys have put your trust in me and shared some really personal and emotional stories, things that I've never struggled with or have been through. And I really appreciate you guys reaching out to me and I can't imagine going through some of the things that you have shared with me, but I know that when I say that I want to encourage and empower you to be the best you can, I don't know how to take away the guilt because I still haven't figured that out 100% yet, but I know that we are resilient and we find the best way to provide for our family. And I didn't really mean to get that go that deep or get that emotional, but I just wanted to let y'all know that I struggle too every day in the mom, the homemaking, the providing for my family role. And it's raining outside while I'm doing this, but the only thing I know to do is to just keep moving forward and keep making progress. And my succulents are growing nicely, but 1% progress each day, whether it's coming out of a really bad situation or making progress towards your home, towards yourself, to your family, 1% progress each day is 365% progress in a year. So if you don't remember anything else I said in this video, just remember that, 1% progress each day. All right, let's keep going. Got me up all night Putting things on the side What do you have in mind? She's awake all the time What are you trying to find? I hope this ain't a lie Cause I'm vibing with all we have Yeah, I'm feeling what we are now I'm laying down on the ground All I do is thinking out loud so one thing that I 
wanted to do with the kids is to get more into gardening. So for Christmas, I bought them this gardening set where you put vegetables in there and then you can see the vegetables grow. So I was just watering those. Unfortunately, the ones that came with the kit, they all died. So Chris went and got some more seeds. So now they're growing, they're growing very well, but it's been so rainy here. I need to put them outside at least for a couple hours a day. It's just been gloomy and rainy for, I want to say like over a week. So, um, they haven't, they've been growing kind of, but not the extent that I want them to. We still plan on putting a whole garden thing outside. We want to redo the outside. I, I'm trying to get Chris to do it in the next couple of weeks. We are going on a vacation. I'm so excited just to get away with the family. Um, but then I want to start trying to do more gardening with the kids. I think it would be a great summer project activity. Tinco Pure One Pet Cordless Vacuum. So it comes with different attachments to it, but I use this to vacuum. I've had two Dysons before and I, I love Dyson, but both of them, the battery doesn't work anymore. Like it doesn't charge. One of our old Dysons, we ended up ordering a new battery off of Amazon and it works. Um, and then the, the newer one, I, well, it's not the newest one. It's probably like the seven and i think they're on 12 now <laughs> but um that battery recently also just gave out and doesn't work anymore so i've been using this one the tinco pure one as pet vacuum and then this is the tinco wet dry vacuum basically it'll vacuum and mop the floors at the same time it's been a while since i've used this but for the carpeted areas i don't obviously i don't use it on there i just use it for all of the hard surfaces. You got something, something I can never be without, yeah. I'm in your command, thought I was a man of my own. Recently, we've been going to a lot of birthday parties. Sailor is in pre-K. She's going to kindergarten next year. And then Savannah is in the pre-K three class. So I feel like every weekend is full of birthday parties. And then whenever we go to the birthday parties, it's always a little bit awkward. Do you guys get that feeling when you're like meeting new moms and you're kind of like, uh, I don't know what to talk about. So my icebreaker question whenever I'm at birthday parties is, what are your plans for the summer? Do you plan on going anywhere? Are you doing any summer camps? Um, is there any fun things or hobbies that we need to try that we haven't tried before? So ideas that I've gotten, because if you're not in grade school, there's not a whole lot of camps open, but some ideas that I've gotten for different types of camps, I know there's a swim, swim class camp. I wanna try out a gymnastics camp that got recommended. Um, vacation Bible study camp and then there's like a pony camp that you can do it's just like a couple hours a, a couple days a week so I'm looking into like all these different options but what are your kids doing this summer any fun camps any fun ideas leave me a comment below and let me know 
So after mopping up everything, you can see where it picked up all of the stuff that it would originally vacuum. It catches it all right there. Pretty gross. Lots of dog hair, obviously. And then it, it picks up all of the dirty water. But I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you're not subscribed and you feel like you got some value out of this video, then I would love for you to click the like button and subscribe to my channel. That way, when I post new videos, you can find them in your subscriptions. But I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you next week. We got our windows down, driving down the 405, sing along to the radio, mm -mm. we're gonna make it someday, nothing's gonna get in our way, we will be the biggest band in town, mm -mm. round and round the world we'll go, putting on the greatest show, so make sure that you don't miss out, just be there. We're taking our shot, bring what you got We're going all the way to the top We will hear the sound of one million people Screaming our names when we're backstage We'll play loud, surfing the crowd Everybody's jumping around Yeah, that's the place where I want So we are continuing our spring cleaning and in last video, I asked you guys what temperature is it outside? Is it close to spring? Is it warming up? Is it cooling off? And I posted a spring cleaning video and I'm like, why aren't people watching this video? Do people not spring clean outside? And the comments from that video, y'all were like, Michelle, it's like 20 degrees outside and I am, am sitting in a foot of snow. And I'm like, oh, okay, sorry about that. But that's how I feel in August. When people, like August 1st, people are posting fall cleaning videos and it's nice and cool and I'm like, Y'all, it's 100 degrees outside. I can't even think about fall right now. So if I'm starting my spring cleaning a little bit earlier, it's because the weather is so nice and that's what we're doing. So we are starting outside again. So this is kind of part two we're doing. I'm going to do like a home reset, um, spring cleaning, whatever you want to call it continuing the outside. So last video, we started the rug a little bit and we had a smaller power washer, but Chris, my husband, I had him go and get one of our stronger power washers. So we are going to power wash all of the cushions on the outside couch, as well as we're gonna re-clean the rug because we have the pressure washer now. And last week we didn't have that. And um, just kind of get the whole outside nice, freshened up, cleaned up mode. And then I'm gonna move inside and work on the laundry room, one of our bathroom closets, and the upstairs. So not only do I hope you get motivation and blah, 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 because I say that every video, I wanted to talk to you guys today about failing. I wanna tell you guys my story about all the different things I've tried, I've failed at, I've gotten so down on myself at, until I found my thing. But more about that later. Let's go ahead and get started. So we are power washing the backyard, which I just said that we're gonna start over here in our like outdoor kitchen area and just kind of get everything cleaned up from the winter time. We haven't cleaned up out here in a while and it feels good where the weather's nice enough, at least in our area, where we can enjoy the outdoors a little bit. So if you haven't figured it out, this is my husband, Chris, if you are new here, and he's gonna help me out here a little bit with the power washer and the pressure washer. And you probably, and if you've been here, you've seen him and various other projects that we've done around the house. Whenever I get a chance to pin him down for a project, I take full advantage of it. And I also mentioned in my Instagram that I, 
so if you are new here, let me let me go back for a minute. I do lots of cleaning motivation videos. We have three kids together, a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a six-month-old. So you can only imagine the chaos and the mess that goes in in our house. So I started this journey to try and be more organized, more put together. I've started to declutter. If you guys know, I have issues with decluttering. It's just hard for me, and but it's a journey that I want to go on and be better at and start you know being more better about decluttering so i do lots of cleaning motivation but i love like projects home decor and all sorts of things for the house getting creative so whenever i can get chris to help me he is very handy around the house then i you know force him into a project and we somehow get it done so we do have some upcoming projects our bathroom is almost done. I'm excited to share with you guys that project this month. And then we ordered the whole Ikea closet. And y'all, that came in in like 100 pieces. I'm not even joking. And Chris is mortified to put it together. I'm like, I'll try and help. But I like to think of myself as being like the idea and the design and then have him kind of do all the work. Now I do have some organizing coming up, which I'm excited because I wanna get my kitchen reorganized again. So that is some more upcoming videos. But right here, we are using the pressure washer. So Chris has a landscaping business, so he has a lot of like commercial grade products, but you can get these like non, non commercial grade. And this is a pressure washer. It just makes it easier instead of power washing. There's these two little, jets like at the bottom and I'm probably going to explain this wrong but it spins really fast so it's kind of like a pressure washer I mean a power washer but you know how long power washing takes um, this just makes it 10 times faster but we will get to the cushions and all the cushion covers on the outdoor patio and get all those power washed but speaking of honeydews, what is the next project or home project that you have on your list? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. So these cushions have had better days, but they've also had worse days. So what I'm trying to say is they're not that bad um, for being out all winter. And I don't think that we've power washed them. Definitely not anytime soon. I don't remember the last time we did it, but we are, we don't put them away. Like we don't have a area where we put them when it rains or anything like that. We got this whole set at World Market for I think I bought it on Clarence one time a couple years ago. So we, I don't know, I'm just not as good at taking care of them um, or having a place or a shed to put the cushions and then remembering to grab them when it rains and so forth. But anyway, they're outdoor, they're pretty sturdy cushions and being able to power wash them helps get out the stains for the most part fairly well. Now you can take the cushion covers off and wash them, but the problem that I've had with that in the past is they are so tight onto the cushion that whenever I take them off, I ripped the cushion trying to get them back on. So we just figured that and I just, I don't like taking our indoor couch cushion has the, the zip off um, cushion covers as well, which it does make it so easy to just wash them in the washing machine, but it is such a pain to take them on and off that at least for the outside, it's easier to just do this.
in the last week or the previous week we did clean this rug with um one of our smaller power washers and it was just a mess whenever we had the bathroom remodel they had spilt concrete and stuff because they were working out here on the patio uh and then it was just kind of a mess so we did like a like a mini power wash on that rug. And this is a ruggable rug. If you're familiar with ruggables, you can put them in the washing machine. So this is a nine by 12 rug. And because there was just all kinds of dirt and concrete that we were like hammering off, uh, we just decided it was easier just to keep it outside and, and power wash it. So, um, but the main thing that we clean our rugs with is that pressure washer as well. So it, because it had rained, whenever we were trying to dry it, it had rained that week um, we're just gonna go over it one more time with this pressure washer and you'll see the difference like how much this gets out compared to just like a regular power washer well I, it did rain it did so it did get dirtier after that but um, we're gonna go over this real quick now one of the questions was what do we do how do we dry the rug so regardless of what type of rug this is we just we use this for all the outdoor rugs and we have done this for indoor rugs as well um, so we just dry it over the, we just hang it over the fence or um, we'll roll it up and then we'll let all of the water kind of seep down and then we'll unwrap it and then lay it out in the sun. So that's kind of how we dry it. I think for today, we're just going to put it over the uh, outdoor kitchen area and then have it dry in the sun that way. So everything out here is nice and clean. So we're just gonna like wait a day or two for everything to dry off and then put everything back. Now it's time for like barbecues and crawfish boils and outdoor stuff. So let me know what do you guys do? Like what the first spring outdoor shindig that you do? Do you like to barbecue? Do you, do you have a special tradition or thing that you like to cook? I know down here in the south crawfish boils are really popular. I know maybe there are crab boils or anything like that. So leave me a comment. Let me know any special thing that you like to do outdoors, especially right in the springtime. Before I move on inside, I'm gonna refill the bird feeder again just in a week. The birds have eaten all of that food from the last time I filled it up. So we're going to just finish off the rest of the bird feeder and fill it up and put it back out. Chris is gonna mow the yard real quick. And one secret that we do whenever, during the winter time, now I cannot speak for if there is like a ton of snow on the ground, but during the winter time where it'll get, you know, sometimes in the 30s, 40s, 50s, he will put rye grass out and the rye grass will grow through this Bermuda grass and it'll make it super green. So our yard will look beautifully green all year round. Now it does grow faster, so you have to mow it 
more often, but this is like an old school lawnmower that he'll use to make it really, really short so that it looks like almost like turf or like a golf, golf course grass. But we like it because it's pretty and it's not scratchy like when the girls play outside. I'm moving on to this linen closet that is in our primary bath and again we just kind of redid our, our whole bathroom so you'll see the new floors there in just a second but I wanted to declutter some of the towels I think I got a little bit decluttered not as much as I wanted to but I want to try and not use so many towels like maybe just have four between the two of us like really really nice soft towels and then try and get rid of all of these towels that just wear off and you know like after you wash them a lot they get scratchy so I don't want as many towels but I still need to buy the new towels that I want so what I want to buy is the bamboo towels do any of you guys have bamboo towels um I, the brand that I really like is the Karalua Karalua I think that's how you pronounce it we have their bed sheets We've had them for several years and once you, I feel like once you kind of have like bamboo stuff, it's so soft. So that's kind of where I want to go. I want to buy those bath towels. They're a little bit pricier, but I feel like if I just have less of those, then I won't have to wash so much. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, so that's kind of my goal here. And then go through all of this and reorganize. We have old swim diapers, pull-ups, things that they might need. Um, that I'm going to hang on to in this, in this basket. And then the next basket is where I keep all of the extra toilet paper. Both of these wicker baskets are from Target and they somehow just fit perfectly in this closet. But if any of y'all have amazing bath towel recommendations, all of our towels now currently are from Target. I just feel like they wear off over time. But if you have like amazing soft bath towels that you 100% hands down are worth the money and just absolutely love, then let me know what they are in the comments below. This next towel is really neat. It it's almost feels like a blanket. So it's really, really thin and it's supposed to be super easy for the beach. Um, like it's sand resistant, you can lay it down and it's like, see how much thinner and flatter it is. I got a couple of them at a spring market that we went to one time. I don't even know what brand they are, but um, I, whenever we go to the beach, people ask me, um, like, what is this? Is this a blanket or is it a towel? I'm like, okay, think about packing a beach bag with four or five of those ginormous beach towels. It just takes up an entire bag. So I like having those little ones, uh, because they don't take up so much space whenever you're traveling or going to the beach since we kind of live close to the beach, like within an hour. Also, I'm redoing the way that I fold towels. I had found this TikTok video or a friend sent me a TikTok video a long time ago and I was spending a lot of time rolling towels a certain way. It was almost like um, spa bath way to roll your towels. So I've decided that I still want to roll them opposed to fold them, but I'm just going to do it kind of this way. I'm going to, you know, first fold it into threes and then roll what's left. <music> So the very, very top shelf, I just have extra sheets. And then the next shelf, I have the um, thicker beach towels. And then I'll have like the beach towels for the, the girls and the kids. And then I have the bath towels. And then I have um, more of like the rags and stuff. And then at the very bottom, I just have the extra toilet paper and then the extra swim diapers for whenever it's summer for rye. So I got rid of a couple things, but I'll probably have to come back around. Next, I am going to focus on the laundry room. 
It's been a little bit since I've done a deep clean in the laundry room, but I want to tackle this area before it gets too out of control. A new place, a new home for a while. Let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back. Take my time, just enjoy the ride. I know man, passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt Get me up, so new, somewhere I can find myself Oh, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel so alive As I reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out to the Now, last year, the laundry room was one of the very first spaces that I wanted to make over. One of the biggest struggles that we had in this area was we had laundry that would just pile up. I had like cheaper plastic baskets. And then for all the kids' clothes, I had a small basket just because their clothes are so small you can do a whole load and then it'll take it would take me like an hour to fold everything just because you can fit so much in a load so i had a smaller basket with the idea that when that basket got full i would be doing laundry a lot more often but i ended up getting those larger laundry baskets because at the end of the day we're just going to have a lot of laundry and that's what i've accepted and um, i just needed something that would be functional and work for our lifestyle now I'm just gonna empty out the water here. For the longest time, I didn't know you had to do this. I know like major cleaning fail on my part. Um, and then I, I realized that the water would stink often. I would go in here and I'm like, why does it just smell like really musty in here? And um, I realized that this water hadn't been emptied in a while. So I'm you know, trying to <laughs> remember to make sure that I'm at least emptying this out once a month and cleaning out this filter. But one thing I want to say, like whenever we started the laundry room and I needed to make this space functional and organized for the way that we live our lifestyle, I was watching a lot of other videos and I want you to keep this in mind, even when like watching my videos, is that you have to create something that's actually going to work for your lifestyle. So I'd watch other people and I'm like, okay, they had this, they had this, they, you know, did it this way and then I would try and do what they did and I'm like that just doesn't work because I don't do laundry every day like it's just a fact so I was like okay what are some of the struggles that I have right now um, the laundry baskets are too small so I would just say okay if I just did laundry every day it'd be fine but the whole thing is in my life right now I'm just not to that point I know that that's you know ideal but I'm just not there yet so what was realistic for me was just getting bigger laundry baskets. And then later in my life, you know, I have three kids, like there's five of us in the house. It's just a lot. So later in my life, I will work towards that. But what is working for me right now in this season of my life? And then let me create a healthy, functional space for us and not what I think our life should be like or something that is just working for someone else. Next, I'm going to move on upstairs, getting everything picked up off of the stairs. You know, all this stuff just <laughs> ends up becoming a big pile here, but I'm going to move everything upstairs, clean up the upstairs, and then also shampoo the upstairs rug. 
Now, I promised you guys I was going to tell you a story about failure. And for some reason, I like when I get to the upstairs part. I either do my, you guys say, I call them TED Talks. Um, <laughs> I either do my TED Talks while I'm cleaning the playroom or while I'm doing laundry or while I'm doing dishes. So one of those three things, if I have a lot of it, then I'm like, this is a great time to just spill out my TED Talk, which I absolutely love doing. And it's been received so well from y'all that I will continue to do this. So, so pushing yourself, challenging yourself, trying new things is just difficult, right? Like nobody grows in their comfort zone. So one of the things that I struggled with was self-doubt, like so much. So I started listening to others who were in my shoes, like when they first started, how did they feel about it? Did they, were they so confident? Were they not? And like over the years, I've just been drawn to motivational messages. Um, it's just increased my confidence. It's changed my life. So I like to share those things on here on this platform because I feel like it has like changed my life so much that it can help others as well. And that's just for people who are new here who don't know like what my channel is about. It's, it's all about that. Being nervous to try new things, having this like fear of failure, having, you know, everything, it doesn't matter. You know, I, I took this as in business, but just like being a parent, new parent struggles, trying to go on a decluttering journey, trying to figure out how to organize your house. Everything is uncomfortable. And I was listening to a it wasn't a TED talk, but it was a podcast and they were talking about their past failures. And I was like, if only everyone knew how many times I have tried different things and it just wasn't my vibe. So starting a YouTube channel is just kind of hard in itself. Uh, it's, it's like sticking through the good times and the bad times, but it's super rewarding. But before that, I have tried several different things and I do work full time. So I've tried lots of different side jobs is what I want to say, where I think that I want to change industries or I want to do something different or I'm feeling burnt out. And one of the very first things I wanted to do was real estate. And although I still want to do real estate, it was, it was real estate investing. It wasn't necessarily being a realtor, but it was invest the whole investing part of it. And I'm like, I'm going to flip houses. That is my, that's really what I want to do. And I went to this like three day course. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, it was like a $20,000 investment and it just wasn't in my cards at the time. But I'm like, that's going to be something for later in life. I want to like flip houses. It, I knew nothing about this, right? So I learned a lot of information and I really wanted to pursue that. I, you know, I actually got books and started reading about it. And, um, I just think that at that time in my life, it wasn't in my cards. Now, the next thing I tried was fitness. So I was really into fitness, like in 2014 and onward, I really self-doubted the way that I looked and I was like, I'm going to get into fitness and then I'm going to try, um, I'm going to, you know, try to, to do this. So I learned all about fitness, got certified, worked with coaches. And then, uh, at the end of the day, I created a fitness blog and I was terrified, like so scared that people would be like, you don't look good enough. I think that was my biggest fear was that, I mean, i if I look back, I'm like, man, what was I thinking? But now, but at the time I'm like, I still don't look good enough. Like nothing was good enough. And I stopped and I had so many people reaching out to me like, can you help me? Can you help me? And I'm just like, no, I'm not good enough. I don't know. You know, I know how to do it for myself, but I don't know anything. I can't. And I was so bummed that I, I stopped that. And that was back in 2018 because I feel like, I could have, I don't know, gone far with that and helped a lot of people. And then the next thing I tried was being a fitness trainer. So actually I tried to be a fitness trainer first and then I started the, the blog that I completely stopped because I was too scared what people thought about me. And the fitness trainer, I couldn't sign people up. I just couldn't sell. I was just like, this is really great, but I don't know. I don't want to ask people to do this. So I, I did that for a little while and it just... It wasn't in my cards. It just wasn't. At the end of the day, I fell off. The blog, I ended up falling off, but that was my passion. And then when I was scared I was going to lose my job in 2020, 
I was like, I've always wanted to do YouTube. And I started a channel and I was like, I am not going to fail. I am not going to fail. I am going to do whatever it takes and I'm not going to fail. Although all of our failures are just stepping stones to a new opportunity. Because if I didn't try out those other things, I would have never known that that wasn't for me. I think a lot of people forget that. They think that they tried something and it didn't work out and everybody saw them fail and in their heads they think everybody's laughing at them. And who cares if they are, number one. And two, you just tried something and it's just not your thing. It's just a stepping stone to something else. I feel like everything had to happen in that exact order to get me to where I am now. Now I feel confident, I feel open to trying new things, open to it failing, or let's just say not working out, and just finding the thing that works the best for me. So if you wanna do something different but you're scared to fail, don't worry, we've all done it. And also, I believe failing isn't failing unless you quit. And the reason why you quit may be different reasons, but for me, it wasn't my vibe or it just wasn't the right time in my life. So you never know unless you try. So stop thinking of failing as being bad, but the thing that's going to lead you to the next point in your life. Try all right. I'm not even worried, but I can't hear the signs you describe. Don't be ashamed. We can't always leave this place and go where no one knows our names Pack your bags We never needed their permission to believe in ourselves So this is the Tinco Carpet One Carpet Shampoo and I like this one because it not only shampoos your carpet or your rug, but it also dries it. So this first round I'm going through and shampooing it and then I'll go back through in dry mode and it helps to dry it. Now this rug is not that dirty. There was a couple spot stains on it, but I, I have never really shampooed this rug ever, maybe once or twice before since we've had it several years. So I was curious to see how dirty it would be and turns out that it's not that dirty but I'm just about done and if you are new here and you did enjoy this video then I would really appreciate it if you did subscribe because I have so much more similar content and projects coming up that I think you'll enjoy and then thank you always to all of you who come back consistently and watch. I appreciate you so much from the bottom of my heart. But next video, I do have some spring decorating, some DIY. It'll be a lot of fun. And I will see you guys next week. I know that you're probably wondering, Michelle, why are you getting rid of all of your food? Well, continuing on from last week's video, which I'll link here in the top corner, we came home from an eight day vacation to find that the breaker box popped and our refrigerator was out for several days. When we opened up the refrigerator, everything smelled horrible. As much as it kills me to throw away everything, that's where we're starting. I'll also be cleaning up the whole house and getting things back to normal. 
I also just finished a great book on self-discipline and have tips to share with you guys if you struggle with getting things done. But right as I'm going through this disgusting refrigerator, so starting where we left off, we just got back from our vacation and all of this food is four or who knows, five days old and it stinks so bad. So I'm going to empty out everything in the refrigerator and unfortunately I have to throw it all away. Luckily, we didn't have a whole lot in the refrigerator because we didn't stock up on food before we left, but all of the condiments, you know, do get pricey adding up. And I had just gone to the grocery store and filled up our freezer. Now, based on the cost of eggs these days, I was pretty bummed. I had a full dozen eggs that have to go in the trash. But luckily, we have an outdoor freezer that has all of our meats. And so all of the meats are still good. So my question for you is, has this ever happened to you? And what is the grossest thing that was in your refrigerator after it went out and went bad for several days? Leave me your comment down below. Stumbling out of bed and I still got you in my head From all those pretty words you said It's like I'm wasted Every time I see your face I'm losing track of time and space I don't know where I am It's like I'm wasted and I won't waste it And I promise that I I will stand by you forever I can't get you out of my mind I will follow you wherever And I won't waste it Now on the bright side, I have a clean slate to start with. It's not very often that I have absolutely everything cleared out and I don't have to go through expiration dates or anything like that. But you know, on the downside, I do have to go and rebuy everything. And I promise that I In the last couple of months, I've been working on organizing my whole kitchen, which I finally have completed. And this is the second time I, done, I have done like a full organization and declutter since I've been in this house. And sadly, I've been in the house eight years. So you can just get an idea of how long it took me to find purpose in organizing. I didn't always see a benefit in organizing because my biggest fear was that I wouldn't be able to maintain the organization. Let's be honest, it does take time to take the things out of the containers or put them into the right spot or consciously think about where you're going to put it so that it stays aesthetically pretty instead of just saving time and throwing it where you see the first empty spot. Now, a lot of things changed for me during the pandemic, including the first time in my life where I was furloughed for a little bit. I was in fear that I was going to lose my job and I had more time at home than ever before. Probably a similar case to most of us spending a lot of time at home, but what started happening was I was getting into my head a lot and I was slowly falling into a depression because we are very social people. So kind of cut, being cut off from the world and all the activities and being able to be outside around people just took a toll on me mentally. There's a couple of things I did to get out of that. One was I decided to go on a new business venture, thus starting a YouTube channel. And two, I decided to plan it around how I could recreate my home as many people may have done that. Now you may be saying, I'm already an organized person and I always have had it that way. And that's great. And for me, I didn't. So when I finally decided to get out of my head and stopped 
rejecting and fighting what I knew was best, I started looking at ideas and figuring out a way that I could be more organized. I decided to start in my biggest pain point and my most used space, which was the pantry. Once I finished the pantry, it almost wasn't even like it was the end result. It was like the journey of how did I let it get this bad and how did I feel like it was okay to have it this bad. Time was always my excuse and time was never on my side. And I recently came across Rory Vaden's TED Talks about how to multiply your time. And even if you're an already organized person, then think of it in a context of something that you want to do, but you just keep letting the I have no time excuse come and play. So how we choose to spend our time is as much logical as it is emotional. So we all have 24 hours in our day. And how do you multiply your time? Well, he says you can do it efficiently, meaning you can just do your to-do list a lot faster to give you some more time. You can focus on prioritizing your task, which I like to do, which means you focus on importance and urgency, or you can take it a step further. Thinking about significance, which could be urgency, how soon does this matter? Importance, how much does this task matter? Or significance, how long does it matter? So what Rory Vaden says in his TED Talk is that you multiply your time by giving yourself the emotional permission to spend time on things today that will give you more time tomorrow. When I heard this, organization was the first and most important thing that popped into my head, right? If I can just spend time on getting things organized, then it will be such a significant difference in my future. Every day, it'll be saving me a little bit more time and even a little bit more money if I have to rebuy things that I didn't know that I had. Now, I even kind of knew this, but the way that he said it, you multiply your time by giving yourself emotional permission to spend time on things today that, that will give you more time tomorrow. When I heard it in that phrase, everything clicked. So if today you're just checking your to-do list or looking at your priorities, don't forget to focus on your significance list. What is the most significant thing you can do today that will save you time in the future? So someone asked me once, what do I spray on my fruits and vegetables? It's a fruit and spray veggie wash. I think the brand I'm using is called Fit. I just found it at the grocery store and I have had some bad luck with cleaning fruits and vegetables. I showed you guys on my Instagram one time that I was cleaning some uh, blackberries and a disgusting spider popped out of the container. When I was cleaning some of the sweet peppers, they had worms in them and ugh, disgusting. So after one trip to the grocery store, I'm like, this has got to fill up my refrigerator and freezer. And I feel like I've barely made a dent. So it's just going to be a slow and steady progress process. We'll buy things as we need them. So although it's good to be home and have food in our refrigerator, let's work on the rest of the house. Give me something new I 
Rye is now 10 months old and what's so funny when comparing him to Sailor my first is that with Sailor I wanted her to do everything really fast like I wanted her to start solid food really fast and walk and crawl and with him I since I know he's my last I'm like don't do that yet don't do that yet <laughs> so unfortunately or it's not unfortunate but I when we went on our trip I had bought all the little pouches so that if we were in the car or we were out I could just quickly feed him and not have to sit down and make him a meal but he probably lasted like one month in that stage and was like I am ready for real food I don't want that junk so uh, I have to make him I mean he's still on bottles but I feel like I have to make him a full-blown meal for every meal which is so cute it just like breaks your heart to know that they're just growing up so fast For Mother's Day, I got these cute little succulent plants. So the girls at their school, they painted a pot. And then at the end of the day, we got to go in and pick out, they got to plant a little flower for me. So I had three of them for each of the kids and they're so cute. So I'm gonna put them outside and watch them grow. the pink stuff paste on the stove and basically what I do is I'll grab a little cloth I'll wet it a little bit and then I will grab a glob of the pink stuff and then start scrubbing away it does a pretty good job on our stove and the stainless steel and it's often what I used when cleaning the stove Now I mentioned a lot of things happened during the pandemic for me, one in which I started a YouTube channel. At the time, Sailor was two, Savannah was about eight months, and I was terrified I was about to lose my job and the career that I'd worked for. I didn't know if it was going to be easy for me to find another corporate job considering so many other people were also in the same position but I knew that I needed something to where I could spend time with my kids. I didn't know at the time if it was going to work out. And in fact, I was terrified of what people would think of me starting off. But over the last almost three years, I have dedicated week by week by week, learning and growing, sharing and finding my purpose. And to be honest, it has changed my life. 
Not only has it helped physically with the way that I'm able to reorganize my home and manage it better, but it's helped me emotionally grow as a person and not only that financially for a family. I always think about how can I do more in these videos and how can I help more with these videos. And I think back ultimately to what has been the biggest positive change in my life and it all comes back to this. Starting here on YouTube has been the biggest life change and I want to be able to help other people like you grow just like I did on YouTube and not only make more money through it, have the time to be able to spend with your kids, change and develop yourself emotionally, and succeed in doing it. This is what I have been spending so much of my time working on the last several months, and if it's something that you've always been interested in, then download my completely free YouTube Power Kit, which is a complete guide to starting a YouTube channel and changing your life. A new place, a new home for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. A new man passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. Get me up, so and in, so where I can find myself. I already know what question you're asking. You're asking Michelle, what is on your hip and what is right sitting on? Well, I got this ad on Instagram and it was for this thing called the Tush Baby. And when we went on our trip, um, if you've ever been to Disney World, you can't bring strollers in. So you, you have to wait in line and you have to hold him. And gosh, he's getting so heavy. So I saw this and it was like a genius idea. So you strap it on your waist and then they just sit there. So it like helps hold the weight, but you still have to hold them. And I'm not crazy about wearing my like wearing babies, you know, all the wearing stuff because it gets so hot. So what I'm wearing, it's called a tush baby. And as funny and goofy as it looks, some of my friends made fun of me for it. They're like, you really bought that? I'm like, heck yeah, I bought this. Do you know how heavy he is? So I don't know. It just, it's pretty, I like it because I can clean with him. For the vacuum, I use the Tinco Pure One S11 Tango. And for this is their wet vac. I'm using the Floor One S5 wet vac. You put in some water in some solution and it vacuums and mops the floor at the same time. Now, this model is a little more pricier. It does have a, a little bit more features than let's say the original one. They did sponsor this one for me a while back and I did buy the first series of it myself. I did give the, I think it was the S3 model, I did give that one away to a friend, but if you are very hesitant on the price, I think that they both do a really good job. Like I said, this one has a little bit more features. It has like the automatic suction, but overall, if you're looking for just a basic wet vac, I don't think that you have to splurge. Now on the vacuums, hmm, I do like the more, like the more powerful vacuum and the more powerful suction, but on wet vacs, I'm okay with the um, less expensive model too. We've been driving around, singing songs way too loud because we wanna. Up, have 
So earlier I was talking about Rory Vaden's TED Talk and then I got into this rabbit hole of all of his information. I ended up buying his book on Audible called Take the Stairs. It's a book centered around self-discipline and getting yourself up and doing things, which on here, this is what I love to talk about, getting up and getting motivated to get things done. So we naturally tend to compare ourselves to other people and a lot of times we think, how did they do it? Did they just get lucky or did they just, you know, do whatever? And here's my after picture because I'm trying to show you that I spent all this time cleaning and it's just, it's not going to be clean, right? So as in comparing ourselves to other, the one, one key message I got out of his book was he said this, successful people do the things other people don't feel like doing. And it just hit home, right? If we always stay where we're comfortable, we are never going to grow. So what are you going to choose to be successful at today? Leave me a comment down below and you better do it because right now <laughs> we are picking up dog poop in the dining room. And I definitely don't feel like doing that. So Chris is gonna do it. And I'm just kidding, but I'm really not. So Chris likes to get hot water and mix it with a little bit of Dawn soap and then pour it on to the stain and then use the wet vac to vacuum it all up. Our dog is 13 years old, so that's just what happens when you get old, right? I can't really blame her because she's having a lot of accidents and I'm a little bit in denial right now that she's getting older, but this is where we're at with that. So one thing I want to ask you guys really quick is if you like this video, do you mind giving it a thumbs up only because I want to see what type of content that you like so I can gear my content more towards what you guys are liking. All right. So we actually cleaned up. We, not me, Chris cleaned up the accident a couple of days ago, but I knew that what was on my agenda for today was to vacuum up this rug. So I do all of my work in the dining room because I like that it's open and it's by the window. And then I have a whole pile over there that is decluttering pile and I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of it. I've posted stuff on Facebook and I've been ghosted twice by people who are interested in buying it. And now I'm at the point where um, I'm, I just, I'm going to probably just take it somewhere and donate it. But back to where I'm going with this, I need to move the table out of the way and then I'm going to, by myself, I should have asked Chris to help me, but he had already left that morning. He had to work that, that Saturday and he already went out, he already left. So now I'm going to do it by myself and I actually get stuck at this point and I just, uh, I think to myself, okay, well, either stains over here, it's fine. I'm just, I'm not going to move the table all the way out of the way. I'm just going to that shampoo it like this this is the bissell pet pro i feel like all these shampoo names have these long names and these models and i can't remember them all so i'll just link it but it's a bis the bissell shampooer one the pet one and chris bought this a long time ago at walmart we've been using this one for a long time and then i was also gifted the tinco shampooer i use both of them the tinco one has a drying feature that is really cool this bissell one I, it does better if you saw my living room video it does better on like the small pile carpet or rugs so this one i just pulled out because i already had it out and i already had solution in it and we're just going to go with this one today
So a lot of people would say that this is so disgusting, but I feel like once you have kids, nothing is disgusting anymore. And I know all you moms just know exactly what I mean. So I'm going to end the video putting this room back together. If you got anything out of this video, if it helped you in any way, then I would love for you to click that subscribe button. If you need to get to know me a little bit better before you commit to subscribing to me, I totally get it. I have a lot of marathon videos where you get a bunch of mar you get a bunch of videos all in one video. So check out one of those videos and then you can make your choice. Also, leave me a comment. Let me know what you want to see more of this summer. I'm excited for lots of new upcoming content to come out. And most of all, thank you, thank you for being here. I'll see you guys next week, and I hope you have an awesome day. So this is the product of living through a renovation, being so sick for the last week, pretty much living and working upstairs all day, and our home being filthy and full of dust. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that we are currently renovating our primary bathroom. I just did not expect the amount of dust and dirt to be not only in our bedroom and our bathroom, but in our entire house. I'll tell you guys all about it, but I am going to get as much done as I can in today's video. Now, it's not going to be perfect because they are still renovating, but I cannot live in all of this dust and mess anymore. So if you are struggling to get anything done today, today is your day because I'm sure it is not as bad as my house. So I will be cleaning the whole house today, the bedroom, the living room, the dining room, the bathroom, and the upstairs. So I'm going to get started here in our master bedroom and you guys look at the amount of dust. I have cleaned this up. I feel like every single day it just becomes more and more and more. When they did do the original demo, they had the door shut to the bathroom and everything was covered. It was covered for two days, but as we are still living in the house, we had to start uncovering some stuff so that I could reach, you know, get in our dressers, get in our, um, you know, start using our bedroom again. And although they are still working, um, they're done with demo. It's just the dust is just non-stoppable. It's everywhere. My original plan was to wait until everything was done and then come in here and do a mass deep clean. I just didn't expect it to be this much and I just can't live in this much dust anymore. So I'm just going to be having to do this every single day um, or at least every other day or when I see it gets really bad until they're done. I am filming the whole bathroom remodel. I am really excited about it. Obviously, I feel like with every project you take on, like bigger project, there's always hiccups and there's always things that just don't go as planned. And we're at that point right now. But I do know that it's taking a little longer than we originally anticipated. But I know that when it's done, it's going to look amazing. If you're new to my channel, then welcome. My name is Michelle. I'm a mom of three, two girls and a little boy, a five month old. And um, yeah, we started off 2023 with a bang. Big projects coming right off the bat. 
I work from home, but here on YouTube, I do lots of cleaning, organizing, and decorating, seasonal decorating, and home projects. Now, I don't love cleaning. I typically do need the motivation to get up and go, but I do love decorating and I love trying new things, creating new spaces, doing projects, um, just being able to be open and creative. I also think cleaning is important, but I don't think cleaning should ever consume your life. I feel like we are all in this together and using YouTube as an outlet to just connect. I always want you to feel inspired and good about yourself every time you watch one of my videos. So I would love it if you subscribed and joined this awesome community. So I have most of the bedroom dust kind of cleaned up and I'm going to move on to the kitchen and living room before I go back in there and vacuum. We have the paper on the floor to make sure that we protect the floors as they are in and out all day cutting the tile or cutting the marble and putting it up in the bathroom. So there were a few projects that I wanted to get done this year and I feel like I've been talking about the bathroom slash closet for a long time I had if you don't remember last year I had tried to order the closet system from Ikea I had designed everything and then when I went to order it like half of everything was out of stock with no idea on when it would be in stock so I'm like well I can't just order like parts of the closet and not the whole thing, not knowing when it's gonna come in. I went over to Ikea, talked to them. They're like, well, we suggest you just ordering it in um, segments. Um, and then when you see other stuff come in stock, then like go in and buy that and complete your order. So I don't know, I didn't want piles of, you know, this huge closet just sitting in my garage waiting for the rest of the pieces to come in. So anyway, I put that whole project on hold and along with that, the bathroom and everything. So we had a contact and I kept telling Chris um, to call him so that he can come give us an estimate. And um, finally he had called him and he's like, oh, I can come over today. And then um, he ended up coming over and was like, oh, I can start on Tuesday. And this was like over the weekend. And we were like, okay. So we, you know, got started right away before we had like truly picked out everything. So like that weekend we went and we're picking out all of the, you know, design and everything, buying samples, bring them in, bringing them in, taking them back, um, trying not to make it clash with the granite countertops and so forth. So anyway, the reason why I mentioned the closet is because the bathroom leads into the closet and we were going to match the floor so whatever we picked out for the floor we were going to match it in the closet so we initially had planned to like do this whole project together and then last minute we decided we need to wait on the closet and then the closet will be a whole separate project maybe later closer to the end of this year so projects for this year we have are obviously this primary bathroom we hope to get done and then our guest bathroom is going to be another project probably our next project I, I don't know exactly when um, it depends how this one goes and then maybe our kitchen and fireplace um, like ripping the backsplash off we're going to keep the countertops of everything and the granite and everything it would more so be like the black the backsplash um, our fireplace I keep going back and forth on if I want to do something against that big long wall I mean you guys let me know if I should do like tile it up, stone it up, leave it how it is, um, 
I don't know, since we're not moving for a little while, I want to change up this house a bit um, because this is the longest house that I have ever lived in in my entire life, and that is eight years. So obviously lots of project projects for this year I'm really excited about. I know that is stressful while you're going through it, but then you look back and you're like, oh, I'm so glad we did it. Now cleaning up my stove, I am going to use the pink stuff to get everything cleaned up. If you've seen the last of my couple videos, you'll know that the pink stuff saved the day when we had slime spilt and stained all over my table, all over my console table, all over the wall. And just yesterday, Chris was sitting in the couch that's in our garage and got up and was like, what is all of this all over my shirt and my pants? And I'm like, it's slime where is this slime coming from it's like i don't know it just appears and i thought we were done with this i thought we got rid of it all i have no idea where this slime is coming from but the pink stuff was suggested by you guys to get the stains out and it worked magically <laughs> So how are you guys doing so far with all of your goals? I know that I created a free guide, the goal getter guide, so that you guys can map out your goals, take action on them and actually achieve them. So the reason I bring this up is because at the very end of my guide, it says to celebrate your wins, regardless of how big or small they are, you have to celebrate your wins. And this came to my attention because I was watching a clip from Tony Robbins and he was asking, how many of you guys do this? When something really good happens, you kind of downplay it because you don't wanna hurt someone else's feelings. So you make it not as big of a deal or you don't celebrate it as much because you're scared that it will upset someone else who also didn't achieve that. He says that what this does is it just teaches your brain that it's not good to feel this happy all the time. And therefore you shouldn't. Now, most people don't need a reason to feel bad or to feel crappy all the time. So what happens is you wait until you've reached this unbelievable level to celebrate your win, but you're not even happy about it. You've lowered your energy so much that you can't even find the joy in it. So what he says to do is instead of waiting until you've hit that goal, that milestone, that unbelievable achievement, is you need to start celebrating now. Chances are you can find something in your life right now to feel grateful for. And when you start creating that energy and celebrating yourself and celebrating your small wins, then you are going to be more likely to achieve the goal. And not only that, you're going to feel happy and joy when you do. So whatever small accomplishment that you accomplished today, you need to celebrate that. You need to celebrate your small wins. You need to create that energy and you need to thrive off of it. Don't focus on the crap feelings that you feel. Focus on the energy that you create when you've accomplished even something so small. Now, I challenge you today, if you accomplish something that leads you towards your goal, I want you to stop and celebrate yourself. Find that joyous energy. It's okay to feel happy and continue to do this at every milestone until you reach your goal. There's another side.
inside of you trying to break through able to tell the truth no one else can see you like i do so here you can definitely see that there's dust everywhere and y'all that is just from that one day i have been vacuuming every single day that they you know whenever they leave every day i've been vacuuming so it's just pouring out from the master bathroom just throughout the house but i will continue to vacuum every day until they're done um hopefully they'll be done you know it won't be too much longer just a couple more days and that's being optimistic Gonna be So as I'm vacuuming up in this little corner, I hit that vase and broke it, but that's okay because it has been broken like this for a while and we have glued the pieces back together. Both of them are broken. So on either side of this media table console, um, I have the two tall vases. They're both broken, um, but they're just turned around to where you can't see it. Even though I would rather them not be broken, I feel like it's not that big of a deal right now because I ordered a new media console table, or what is that called? Like a media center set, whatever, to go underneath the TV. And it's long enough to where I can't have two things on either side of it. So it's just going to be, um, I'm gonna get rid of those two vases and then just have that long console table, which is back ordered until March. So we probably won't see it here until springtime. So this is the bathroom that we've kind of been living out of this one, as well as the upstairs bathroom. So it's not that big of a deal that we don't have a bathroom. It's more of a big deal that it's the dust. That's more so what is killing me than like not having our bathroom. But since this one is now our temporary main bathroom, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and clean up in here as well. So this is the bathroom that I was talking about is potentially going to be our next project. We're just going to see how this one pans out first. And then um, I'm thinking about doing something fun in this bathroom. So in our master bathroom, primary bathroom, we're doing, you know, the grays and the whites. I feel like it's classic and... I don't know if it's out trending, but whatever I picked out, I feel like is really pretty and what our style is. And I feel like it's going to be really pretty. And in this bathroom, I'm thinking about doing like green tiles or something a little more funky. Um, this is not our forever home. So I do go back and forth whether or not to do like a cool style or to do like a safer style where it will um you know sell better whenever that time comes not in, not soon maybe like in the next five years or so so i don't know you guys let me know what should i do in this bathroom i think we're going to rip out the tub and tile but let me know if i should do something funky and fun or keep it like the grays and the whites But I can't hear the signs you describe Don't be ashamed We can't always leave this place and go where no one knows our names Pack your bags We never needed their permission to believe in ourselves So come with me 
Next, I'm going to tackle all of the toys that are on the stairs, the girls' bedroom, and the upstairs playroom, which is where I've been kind of staying and working these last few days. I just picked up the dining room. I have some like bar stools to get rid of. I still haven't extended the table or anything. These chairs are going to be gone. I've started decluttering out the girls bedroom they're all of their clothes as well as rye's clothes kind of getting out all of his clothes that are too small and donating them so i'm also i was you know trying to like live up here work up here um get all this stuff cleaned i'm also in the process of doing like clothes decluttering so i have a couple projects going on at the moment but once i get my closet re-decluttered again i still need to go through all of those clothes and um it's just easier when i can get easily to my closet and work in there without having the bathroom torn apart um, then i can get that video out and it will be like everyone in the whole house's clothes decluttered and organized i'm really proud of going through it all myself and getting it organized and getting rid of so much clothes not only my clothes, the girls' clothes, the baby clothes. Um, I'm really proud of myself. I'm, I'm getting there, you know, step by step, trying to get rid of stuff. I do, I need to get rid of a lot more stuff, but um, although it's not perfect, I'm really proud of how much I've been able to accomplish so far. So I had a question on my Instagram the other day and um, they kind of asked that or they said that they had been watching a video and in one of the videos I had been talking how I had some depression growing up and how I managed to like get off of it and stay out of out of depression basically. So um, I think there's there's different reasons why people fall into depression there could be specific events that lead to it um there could be reasons that you just don't even know why you're depressed and you're just feeling down and like really unmotivated um there's a there's lots of different things now for me it was more so through my childhood i said that i was on antidepressants for 10 years um all throughout my childhood and then when i became like an older teenager, maybe in my 20s or right before my 20s, I decided that I no longer wanted medication. Um, there was never a specific event that led to it. It was just kind of 
just something that I had. I, I don't even know I knew how what my feelings were at the time. Um, but some of the things that, um, and you know, always talk to a doctor with what you're feeling. If you're feeling certain ways, there's no, you know, there's no harm in getting help, especially when you feel like talking to someone can be helpful. Um, but for me, I will just say like when you're in it, it's very difficult to see a way out of it. Um, but you have to be the one to make the change, like an intervention and all that stuff. Like you have to be the one strong enough to say, there is so much life to live and I don't want to waste another day feeling this way. So whether you get help or you start working on yourself or a combination of both is what I recommend. So for me, years and years and years of like self-doubt, negative self-talk, um, all of these things make you believe that you're not good enough because you're telling yourself that. Um, so what I had to start doing was finding ways to get out of that negative self-talk. Um, hence why I'm like addicted to self-help, addicted to motivation, addicted to um, these inspiring people, why I spend all my time um, listening to it and then constantly every day telling myself, something good like doing gratitude is very important it sounds kind of you know whatever at first but when you can really find something to be grateful for then you stop relying on that feeling of crap that you feel like all the time so so that's one thing like your mindset is going to be a big indicator now your physical health and your physical well-being they all connect to each other so tony robbins had once said like if you're feeling super sluggish, one of the first things that you can do to create positive energy is to stand up and move your body. Like not necessarily work out, but literally like if you're sitting in a meeting or like you're just sitting around and you're just feeling like blah, if you just like sat up and like stretched and swung your arms around, you'll realize that you will have a lot more energy than you did earlier. And then you can go on to the next thing. So then the next thing for me, working out, creating that, creating that positive energy, releasing those endorphins to help supplement, you know, antidepressant medication. So, um, and I'm just, this is all me talking for myself, not for what you should do. Um, again, always talk to your doctor about that. But um, like these little things, these little habits every single day to gradually improve yourself, you can get out of it and never have to. To look back I promise you um, but you have to work on yourself and you have to want it so having something to work towards constantly growing as a person is just going to be so life-changing and impacting that you won't even realize it um, cleaning my home through this platform is a way to connect from me to you and you to me as well but it is not consuming my life and it never will consume or define me as a person and I hope that you don't ever feel like your definition of a good mom or your definition of a good human being is tied to how clean your house is like I understand that it has to get done right but it should never be linked to how good of a mom you are or a person you are Okay, I've said a lot and I got a little deep there. So I'm going to finish cleaning up the playroom before I finish vacuuming it. And then I will be done for today and I will go and celebrate this accomplishment. Yeah, he sets my body in motion. He just, he knows how to turn things up. And he knows what gets me going. Yeah, like a little text saying, hey, what's up? Look at me, I'm in a bad situation Look at him, he's got a bad reputation They be looking at us Thinking we are too much Look at me, I'm in a bad situation Look at him, he's got a bad reputation They be looking at us mm. Why do I need to be good all the time? I'm wrapped around his finger, but he is mine Don't care what they say, too late anyway So just to prepare you, in the month of February, I will be having 
lots of decluttering of clothes, which I mentioned earlier, but I'm also going to be focusing a lot in the kitchen, getting the kitchen reorganized, cleansed out, and also going to start trying to declutter in there. If we end up finishing the bathroom, I'll have that video out as well. But for the most part, I think my main focus is going to be the kitchen unless um, something comes up or something I've ordered doesn't come in in time. Why do I need to be good all the time? I'm wrapped around his finger, but he is mine. Don't care what they say, too late anyway. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that you really did enjoy today's video. And I hope that you're subscribed if you are not already. So I'll see you guys next week. No drama, no drama, yeah.